Hello friends, welcome to Crack Gate CSE and in this series of computer organization and architecture we are continuing with our memory organization topic and this is the second video of memory organization topic in the first video we have discussed several basics like what is memory organization what is memory chip what is cell what is memory request along with some other small basics so please watch that video first because the basics or the concept of that particular video will be used here as well and in this video we'll be discussing what is byte addressable memories what is word addressable memories along with the little endian and big endian techniques right so without wasting time let's try to understand what is byte addressable memories as you can see that here we are having the word as byte byte, be, byte means it is a collection of 8 bits that means if we are processing the data in a memory in a 8 bit format then it will be known as byte addressable how let's see when the memory cell size is 8 bit then the memory is known as byte addressable what does it mean see we know that the memory chip configuration is represented in these representation like we are having a x or a multiplication sign in between two parts so the right hand side part so the, sorry the left hand side part is known as the uh, number of cells in the memory so here we are having four number of cells in the memory and each cell is capable to store these eight bits so here you can see that in all these examples in all the memory chip configuration the cell size is fixed to eight so if the cell size is fixed to 8 then it will be known as byte addressable memories see here we are having a 2 bit address because we can find out log 4 log 4 base 2 is equal to 2 similarly log 64 base 2 is 6 similarly you can find out the how much bit address is required for the respective memory chip configuration right so if the cell size is fixed then it will be known as byte addressable and if the cell size is not fixed then it will be known as word addressable now let's move on with the word addressable memories so when the memory cell size is word length what is word length the word length is the uh, length of the word which has been processed inside the cpu so if a cpu is processing 8 bits then the word length is equal to 8 bit if the cpu is processing 16 bit then the word length will be equal to 16 bit and so on. So when the memory cell size is equal to the word length of CPU then memory is known as word addressable right here these word may not be fixed it can completely depend on the word length of the CPU. So here we are having these uh, memory chip configurations where this represents the number of cells and this represents the size of each cell and here the size of each cell is not fixed therefore it is known as a uh, word addressable memories now there are two important points that you should uh, uh, paste in your mind is the default memory configuration is always byte addressable that means whatever the operations we are performing in the memory that will be uh, done or uh, using the bytes right so it is byte addressable which means that the data is stored in memory in a byte wise manner so whether you are storing a data or you are retrieving the data all these operations will be performed in a byte wise manner right but if we talk about cpu operations are performed on a word format so in the memory we are having byte wise manner but in the cpu we are having word format so because of that we have to use the memory interfacing these memory interface allow us to adjust the word length of cpu so that we can access the data from memory in form of word because cpu is always processing in form of words but memory is always processing in form of bytes so we need an interface we require an interface to cope up so that the word should be working here and the byte should be working in the memory so the memory interfacing will be used to uh, make a synchronization among the CPU and the memory right but make sure one thing that you know that memory cell size is always fixed to 8 memory cell size will not change cell size will be same as 8 bits only the thing which changes is word size and the number of cells that we are using for that particular operation 
what does it mean that if we are having a cpu of 8 bit microprocessor that if we are having 8 bit microprocessor that means cpu is uh, executing 8 bits length the word is of 8 bit length in cpu if we are uh, if we are utilizing 8 bits in cpu that means the word size equals to 8 bit but if the cpu word length is 16 then the word size will be 16 if the cpu word length is 32 then the word size is 32 bits so on the basis of cpu word length the word size will change memory cell size always remains same but the number of cells interfacing will change as per the word size so here we are having 8 bits that means we will be using only one cell because one cell size is equals to 8 bit right but if the word size is 16 bit then one one cell will not be sufficient then in that case we will be using two bits and if it is 32 bit then we will be using four cells accordingly the number of cells will be increased but the processing will be in bitewise manner in the memory right now let me conclude few more things so let me give you an example that how exactly the things work right so see this example here i am considering 8086 cpu here the word length is given as 16 bit right so what is the word size word size is 16 bits right and this is the instruction given let us uh, for now just consider that this move represents the opcode this ax represent the register and it shows the destination and this 2000 represents the source so we'll be understanding these instructions as well once the lecture goes on do not worry about these instructions if you don't know if you don't have any idea for now just consider that move tells you the opcode that what operation we need to perform ax tells you the destination that at which particular location particular location you have to store the result and this source tells you that from which particular particular uh, location you have to take out the data right now this move ax2000 that means we have to move the data which is stored at the 2000 location in the register ax this move is a data transfer operation so this move tells that this is an opcode and uh, this opcode tells you what kind of operation need to be performed so this mov is a code for the data transfer instruction this ax is a register this represents the destination so destination is a register whose name is ax and this will be of 16 bits 2000 is a source so it is a memory address which is we know that memory is always the byte addressable memory now here one thing is if it is byte addressable memory so let's say that this is the memory that we are having right so here we have to store 16 bit starting from 2000 so this 2000 is 8 bit and this 2001 will be 8 bit so these uh, both of the cells simultaneously acts as a 16 bit now we have to store the data of 2000 as well as 2001 into the register ax so the address which is having even number is known as even bank the address which is having odd number is known as odd bank the a the values stored in ax will be 0 to 15 so 0 to 7 is known as lower bound and 8 to 15 is known as higher bound now while executing this particular instruction this instruction is given there are two possible outcome due to the lack of order so what is the lack of order because we do not know among 2000 or 2001 which one consists the lower uh, lower bytes and which one considers the higher bytes that means we are not having any idea because there is no such order using which we can find out whether these are the lower bytes or these are the lower bytes similarly for the higher byte so there are two possibilities one possibility is if 2000 contains the lower bytes then this 84 will be at this lower place and this 23 will be at this higher place so this will be the result but what if 2000 contains the higher bytes so if this 2000 contains the higher bytes this 84 will be here at higher place and this 23 will be here at lower place so you can say that see that there is an inconsistency and to handle these kind of inconsistency we use the andean mechanism right andean ness mechanism so there are two kind of andean ness mechanism one is little andean another one is big andean in little andean 
the lower address contain the lower byte and higher address contains the higher bytes so for example this is the given uh, memory we are having and these are the addresses so the lower addresses always contains the lower values similarly the higher addresses always consists the higher bytes let's say this here zero is a lower byte and so on we are increasing up to five and five is a higher byte but if you talk about the big endian in big endian the lower address contains the higher byte that means this zero address will be containing the higher byte that means five will be stored here like this similarly the higher address contains the lower byte so this is the higher address five it will be contain the lower address zero so whenever you are using any such operation there will be one information given to you that whether it is little endian or big endian and if there is no uh, details are given for the endianness mechanism you can consider it by default as the little endian because by default mechanism is used uh, by default mechanism is little endian so if we are considering the by default case for this particular instruction what will be the value the lower address uh, sorry the lower lower address contains the lower byte so this is the lower address and what is the lower byte this 2000 is the lower byte so 84 will be at this lower byte place and similarly the higher address contains the higher byte so this is the higher address 2001 is the higher address as compared to 2000 and this will be containing the higher byte so that's why it is 2384 so using this we can handle the inconsistencies in the uh, while storing the memory right while uh, extracting the memory or while storing the memory these kind of mechanism can be used now let's understand the memory chip so this is the block diagram of the memory chip in the block diagram of the memory chip we will be having some address pins some data pins along with the control pins so these data pins will be to read the data this address is to enable the cell and these control pins tells you whether to read or to write so this is a general block diagram of the memory chip right so this is the basic idea how the things are working in the memory organization and in the next video i will be coming up with few numerical questions which can come in your exam so don't miss, miss those questions because those questions are very important and can contain good footage as well so thank you very much for your time and in case if you are new to this channel please subscribe the channel press the bell icon and make sure you like this video if you find it useful thank you very much for your time keep supporting keep learning have a great day